Uh, first of all, we'd like to thank the GSUS Project Band for their music this morning, and the Alumni Relations uh, team for hosting. And also, we'd like to thank Maury Lanning for coming to campus this morning and speaking for us. More Maury was um, a former Dean of Students here at Concordia and Mayor of Moorhead, and this year he is the Alumni Achievement Award. So thanks for being here. So let us give glory to God, our light and our life. Oh, come, let us worship and praise. Please bow your hands, bow your heads and pray with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us all here this morning, back to our home. Thank you for bringing alumni safely to our campus. And we pray that we use this time for fellowship and gathering to reconnect and also glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. That's for our first song. <laughs> According to Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Word of God, word of life. Thanks. 
Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Good morning and happy homecoming. It is an honor to speak to you today on the theme, Holy, Holy Hands and Feet. I have spoken in chapel many times over the past 47 years. Uh, that probably gives you some sense of my age. As I prepared uh, for this chapel talk, it dawned on me that this might very well be the last time I get the chance to do this. I then remembered my first chapel talk that I gave as a Concordia senior athlete in 1966. In those days, chapel was held five days a week in the field house, and Friday was student chapel. You might be surprised to hear that I still have a copy of that talk. I did not save it because I thought it was a classic, but, by, but because, as my wife would say, I'm a saver. I titled the chapel talk, The Spectator and the Christian. My message was that as Christians, we are not just uh, spectators watching the game of life pass by. Instead, we are called to be actively engaged in living out our faith. Christ says, blessed are those who seek righteousness, meaning that we are to be actively engaged in the world around us. My message that day reflected the Concordia influence on me during my student years. As a student, I recognized that being dedicated to the Christian life requires faith in action. The passion with which I spoke prompted uh, then President Joseph Knudsen to come up to me after the talk, a little scary thing to have that happen. But he urged me to take my fire to the seminary. While I chose a different career path, my talk may have helped open the door later to a job offer from President Knudsen and Dean Bowe. While I had been considering several career paths, I decided to accept the offer that led to a nearly 39-year career working here at Concordia with students. In the years since graduating, I have sought to be actively engaged in living out my faith. The text read today from the Gospel of Matthew has also guided my personal and professional life following graduation. When asked what is the greatest commandment, Jesus said that we are to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love our neighbors as ourselves. The real power and genius of Concordia is that students are taught, encouraged, and challenged to love God with our whole being and our neighbors as ourselves. Concordia is focused on the whole person using the talents that we have been given to their fullest and caring for others as God has cared for us. In his book, uh, Christian Ethics and Moral Philosophy, theologian George Thomas writes, the fundamental principle of the Christian ethic is love of God and love of neighbor. If we are to understand the full meaning of this principle, we must consider the embodiment of love in Jesus' life and death, as well as its expression in his teachings." End of quote. The love commandment is in fact the essence of our faith, guiding us as we live our lives. Furthermore, the love commandment is the foundation of Concordia's mission. You all know it. The purpose of Concordia is to influence the affairs of the world by sending into society thoughtful and informed men and women dedicated to the Christian life. Being dedicated to the Christian life means that we are to love God with our whole being and love our neighbors as ourselves. This requires us to fully utilize the talents God has given us and seek to influence the affairs of the world as God would have us do. Being dedicated to the Christian life means living a life of service. Last fall, the Concordia Board of Regents approved a five-year plan for the future of the college entitled Whole Self, Whole Life, Whole World. The plan stated, and I quote, this will be the heart of a Concordia education. The whole self goal is to lead students to a lifelong pursuit of the examined life. The whole life goal calls for building competence, creativity, and character, 
and the whole world goal challenges students to think globally and act locally. These goals reflect the commitment to educate the whole person in order to influence the affairs of the world and care for others as God would have us do. The Concordia experience is all about the wholeness called for in the love commandment. There are two important aspects of the greatest commandment. First, we are to love God with every aspect of our being. Throughout the Bible, there are countless references to four basic aspects of our being, namely heart, soul, mind, and strength. Each aspect is important in its own right, but each is interdependent on other aspects. This is what is called the concept of wholeness. Our Christian faith requires that we involve our total being. We are not to just love God with our minds and hearts, but with our whole being. We are called to love God as he has loved us. Secondly, we are called to love God and our neighbors to our fullest capacity. Loving God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength completely means loving God to our fullest capacity. God has given each of us gifts in each aspect of our being. These gifts are like seeds planted in us that need to be nourished and fed in order to grow and develop. First, the gift of heart. Heart is what we're really all about at the core of our being. It is what we are deep down inside. As recorded in Luke, Jesus says, the good man brings out the good stored up in the heart, and the evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For out of the overflow of his heart, his mouth speaks. Heart is all about loving and caring for ourselves and others. We love God with all our heart when we love our neighbor as ourself, when we treat others with dignity and respect, when we care for each other's needs, and when we show compassion and empathy. In order to love God to the fullest capacity of, heart, of our heart, we need to always strive to better understand ourselves and others. Working to better understand ourselves and others expands our capacity of the heart. Another way to understand heart is, as Jesus said, recorded in Matthew, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. If our relationship with God is our real treasure in our lives, not our earthly goods, we will love God with all our heart as he has loved us. The gift of soul is the eternal essence of our being, our spiritual guidance system, and our moral value system. Soul is the aspect of our being that enables us to become one with God. We love God with all our soul when we are moved by the spirit within us. Jesus said, God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The Apostle Paul wrote, but he who is united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. In order to love God to the fullest capacity of our soul, we need to let the spirit of the Lord fill our lives and guide our behavior. The gift of mind is our ability to analyze, think, reason, and know. We love God with all our mind when we develop and use the intellectual gifts that God has given to each of us. By developing our minds to the fullest capacity, we can better know and understand God and all of his creation. Theologian Charles McCoy said, the activity of scholarship is as necessary to the Christian faith as is breathing to the human body. Good scholarship requires thorough research, in-depth study, extensive dialogue, and lots of practice. When we do these things, we can love God with our whole mind. What does it mean to love God with the gift of strength? The psalmist wrote, God is our refuge and strength. Whatever we do using our gifts from God, we do it through the strength that God supplies to us. In 1 Peter it is written, each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others faithfully, administering God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, he should do it as one speaking the very words of God. If anyone serves, he should do it with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and power forever and ever. End of quote. No matter what we may do, God gives us the strength to do it. When we recognize that all of our strength to do anything comes from God, we will love God with all of our strength. 
Now the love commandment also calls us to care for our whole being and caring about wholeness should also include caring for our bodies. The Apostle Paul writes, do, not, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God? You are not your own. You were bought with a price, so glor glorify God in your body. We love God with our whole being when we care for our bodies as it is a temple of the Holy Spirit within us. We are called to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength and care for our bodies as the temple of the Holy Spirit within us. These are not easy tasks, but striving to do these things will demonstrate our commitment of being dedicated to the Christian life. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for your love. Grant us the strength and will to love you with our whole being and to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God and for all people according to their needs. God of us all, help us to follow your word by loving our neighbors as ourselves, both here and around the world. Hear us, O oh God. Holy God, we pray for our country and ask that you grant wisdom and discernment to those who lead, so their decisions may reflect your word. Hear us, O oh God. God of grace, help us to be mindful of those less fortunate in our community. We ask that you be present this weekend with all who are participating in Homeless and Hungry as they work to not only change the lives of others, but also their own. Hear us, O oh God. Loving God, we ask you to bless the hearts and hands of all who have arranged this wonderful week of homecoming celebrations. As we prepare to welcome back our alumni and friends, we pray for good weather and safe travels for all. Hear us, O oh God. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy and grace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand for a blessing. May the God of coming home and going forth bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.